Right, here we are once again, guys, jumping on the bandwagon, and the wait is over. Well, it has been for a few days now. Um, Rise of the Tomb Raider, the sequel to the 2013 reboot, Tomb Raider, as it's called. Um, And this game is a very, very good sequel. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, It's fun, fast-paced, and it has got quite a few improvements over the last game that make it worthy of being a sequel. I'll quickly go into the story. Uh, Don't really want to spoil anything, so I won't go into it too much. Just the quick outline of it. So essentially, a lot has happened since Yamatai. Um, There has been some backstories explained in comic books, but I won't spoil that because just in case you want to read those. But essentially, she comes back from Yamatai and no one really believes what Lara Croft says happened slash what she saw on Yamatai. No one believes a word of it, thinks it's just a load of crazy talk. And it is revealed quite early on that her father, no one really believed him about his discoveries or his theories either. So, as it's shown in this article here, she's just another crazy craft. So this is what gives Lara Croft the drive to complete her father's work by venturing to Syria to go in search of the lost city and the prophet and essentially chaos and adventure ensues from there but as i said i won't go into it that much um i'll just do you know quick thing about the characters i mean lara croft is a little bit more developed she's obviously still a killing machine um she's got this sort of obsessive behavior with her that she wants to complete her father's work and nothing else matters she shuts out her friends and you know a family most trusted allies because of this obsession to make an, make their name of the Crofts, you know, something in, in history books. Um, I mean, on the flip side, that the bad guys as well, the villains, uh, are believable characters. The believable characters and their motives seem pretty pretty simple and you know believable. Um, so all in all, it's it's a really good story and it's really enjoyable to play through. So I'll uh, talk a bit about the gameplay of Rise of the Tomb Raider. Um, As well as it being an action-adventure game, the action part is a third-person shooter. So as you can imagine, I've seen a lot of reviews say this, it's a bit lackluster in the combat. It's run-of-the-mill and standard, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, It's it's a solid game, a solid shooting game. It uh, has good mechanics, smooth action, and the intuitive cover system where Lara just bobs in and out of cover when she sort of feels like it works. It's not annoying. She doesn't get out of cover for no reason. I've had a few times where silly things have happened, but from on average, it's still a solid solid shooting mechanic, so you don't need to change it. Um, along with that, the AI of the enemy seems to have been improved vastly. Uh, they're still not brilliant. They still make stupid errors and in occasion, they're quite easy to kill, but there has been times, especially playing on the higher difficulties, I'll go into the difficulties in a bit, but I've been killed quite a few times when one of them has been suppressing me and I have been outflanked by another one and just mowed down. I like that. I like to be frustrated in a game. Crafting returns in Rise of the Tomb Raider, although it is a bit tweaked from its predecessor. Uh, this time, you can collect leaves, timber, other mushrooms, minerals, other different things just to create different items. You can craft on the fly now. You can craft arrows on the fly, uh, different types of arrows, bandages when you get into a sort of, you know, in quite a lot of games now where it's sort of like you're you're dying and it's all going grey and blood everywhere and you heal yourself and it's like a thing just to instantly heal yourself. It's a good mechanic. Um, the upgrade system is back with uh, your weapons, your pistols, your bows, shotguns, all those kind of good things. There's the SMG now, assault rifle, and the bolt action rifle as well, and a heavy pistol. All sound sort of weapons that you get in this sort of genre. Um, all upgrades, you can get silencers, 
uh, X-Men magazines, and my personal favourite for the shotgun, the Dragon's Breath rounds, just to set those enemies alight when they get too close to you. One of the gripes I have with the weapons as one of them, especially one of them in particular, and I'll, go, I'll, I'll mention this the main thing, because the rest of them are just eh, little niggles that you can just pass over, but it's definitely the problem with the gas arrows, and I'll show you a clip right now of me in gameplay, and yeah. Were you with Constantine down in Syria? As you can see, the gas hour does make it a little bit easier since everyone just chokes to death. I would like it if, I mean, I'm not sure. I know, I know the flamethrower guys have gas masks on, but I don't think they ever equip themselves with gas masks to stop themselves. If, for, for instance, if you hit a target with them, they all choke to death. If that alerted everyone to the presence of people who are choking to death, that would be a little bit better and balance it out a little bit instead of just firing them randomly, you know, and killing everybody. Here is a criticism that I have with the difficulty, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, there is four difficulty modes. Adventurer, Tomb Raider, Season Tomb Raider, and, or Season Raider, sorry, and Survivor. Now, all these basically do is between them, enemy difficulty gets increased, they have more health, do less damage, do more damage, aim assists off, all this kind of thing. I mean, I'm playing through on Seasoned Raider because I consider myself a Seasoned Raider. Um, and it is still quite easy. And it shouldn't be. I mean, I've had situations where I've been killed, mowed down, but that's generally because of my own stupid fault trying to rush enemies with the shotgun. Um, I haven't found Survivor yet, I know there's a few tweaks like uh, uh, items cost more money, uh, upgrades are less common or something along those lines. It's, it's still, I reckon it's going to be quite easy. And if you are a Season Raider, definitely play it through on Season Raider or Survivor uh, to even get a challenge in the game. Or if you, I mean, if you're just enjoying the storyline, then fair enough, go for the lower, for the lower difficulties, it's fine but I just think it should be a little bit more challenging. The skill she returns in uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, similar to the one it was before, you've got the Brawler class, the Hunter class, and the Survivor class in the skill tree. I personally prefer the Hunter skill tree. I like the uh, killing multiple people with uh, arrows. Uh, I like the finishing moves with the certain weapons, but it's just basically what you find is your play style. Um, obviously, Survivor gives you bonuses to looting and all that sort of stuff. Uh, Brawler, more combat base, and Hunter's sort of just all-round uh, sort of skills. One of the obvious things that returns in Rise of the Tomb Raider is the tombs. Uh, the challenge tombs that you can optionally do, but I would recommend you do them. They are fun, fun challenges for you to do. And again, I won't spoil them because I won't spoil the you know the puzzles. But they're not they're not to that hard. But I have been stumped by a few. Um, but it is a lot better now that you actually get a decent reward at the end of it instead of just some cogs, you know, a bit of scrap that didn't really make sense in an ancient tomb. Now you get ancient knowledge, uh, skills that improve your fighting ability, like uh, being able to fire more arrows in quick concession without going back to your quiver, or being able to target uh, the heart of animals to kill them instantaneously. Alongside the uh, obvious tomb side quests, there is a number of collectibles um, for you to find in the world, and... Uh, there is a ling, as I would like to call it, I think it's the linguistic system, where you have to translate obelisks, 
which essentially give you clues to the area and secrets and other tombs and general kind of things. The only way you can upgrade your linguistic skill is by finding murals to translate uh, books and uh, scripts on, you know, events that have happened that in the world that reveal more of the background story, but also raise your linguistic skill. Uh, from like there's Russian and Greek and another one or so and you basically can now translate these uh, monuments and give you access to these extra hidden items in the area they appear on your map so you can go collect them it's a good it's a good feature to get you to collect the other items although it's optional it's entirely optional it is something that's worth doing just to even get the background story Following on from the uh, collectibles, uh, the new system in order to gain new weapons, although you gain new weapons by finding uh, parts like you did in the last game through, uh, from what I can tell, it's through lockboxes now, um, you get new parts for weapons. Um, but there is now coins, coin caches that you can find in the world and they give you ancient coins that you can trade to a weaponsmith to get more weapons and items and costumes, which I think is a pretty good mechanic because it forces you to uh, go and explore the different areas. But again, it is optional. You, I would recommend doing it though to get better weapons. In addition to the uh, combat, um, there is the what my favourite thing is one of the is the finishing moves when you got enemies down the ground and you go up to and you just stab him with your pickaxe. I just think they're really, really brutal and really satisfying. But one of the things that, uh, I don't know, there's just something about smashing a guy over the head with a bottle and then stabbing him with a knife. Whoa, I got an achievement for that? <laughs> awesome. One of my favourite aspects of the Tomb Raider gameplay and the Tomb Raider experience, which is similar to Uncharted, is the set pieces where you're, uh, I don't know, glacier is smashing down and you're running away and avalanches and, oh, quick time events and, oh. And I just think they're really, really satisfying, really fun to do. And the best thing about it is if you fail those quick time events or if you're like me and put down the controller for a second and realise an avalanche come into you, you and you get knocked off. It's just the death animations. The death animations are really, really gruesome and gratified, and it's a really sadistic thing that you kind of want to think, hmm, what happens if I fail this? What will happen to Lara if I fail this? Another thing that I'm really glad about in this game is the Tacton multiplayer of 2013 has been ripped out and replaced with the Expeditions mode which is essentially uh, where you can do score attacks on missions you've already played and replay them in different ways. Uh, you can create missions, and what makes them uh, different, and you can modify them, is you use these modifying cards, which essentially either strengthen your player, weaken your player, uh, increase enemy strength, um, add weird mutators, to the game like my personal favorite that I did was a combo of every time you loot a enemy he might have a chance to explode but also I put it so you didn't start with any animal ammo so you have to either find ammo in the world or just risk trying to loot fallen enemies I think it's a really good mechanic there's also like uh, fun ones like big head mode and rainbows coming out of Lara and enemies always on fire so I think I think it's a really good fun addition it's not like amazingly new it's sort of reminiscent of the contract mode in hitman absolution you know you can obviously see the tie there but it's still better than the multiplayer it's still fun to do however one problem i did find with it was and i've got an example here as well if the square enix server shuts down if you lose connection to it, that's it. It just kicks you out to the main menu. There's no, there's no choice about it. And what for, for me, it happened every time I did one mission. Did one mission in a string of missions I created. The next mission, 
cut some servers. He did it, I don't know, four or five times until I just literally just got sick of it. Just got sick of it and just put it down. Overall, I think Rise of the Tomb Raider is a solid game. There's not too many negatives. I mean, some of the negatives I would not mention because it's sort of story-based, but it doesn't detract from the game. It's still an enjoyable experience, solid game, fun to play, and I definitely will be playing it again on the harder difficulties. And I would recommend... I won't get, I'm not going to give it a score. I'm just going to say, if you are a fan of the last game, you've missed out on the last game, or you are new to the series, this is definitely a game to pick up. However, I, even though it's not necessary, I would strongly recommend if you haven't played any of the other games, you, you get 2013, it is a decent game. And to play this as well, I mean, it's, it's, it's great. So definitely pick this game up. Well, that's it guys. My first review. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I'm a bit rusty at it, but hopefully I'll get better. Uh, probably more reviews coming, not probably, definitely more reviews coming in the future. So, like, subscribe.